Caddis Maximus here, this time with a half-inch drive ratchet uh, review and comparison. This is going to be shorter than my quarter-inch driver or quarter-inch drive ratchet review and comparison. I'm not going to open these up because I've covered the internals in some other videos. Also, in the future, I have a few Proto and Duralast ratchets. So I'm going to end up doing independent review and comparison videos of those just because I have so, like I did with these Red Harbor Freight Ratchets, because I have uh, enough of them to make a, a nice relevant video. This is just to show uh, the styles and types of half-inch ratchets that are out there. Obviously, they're more expensive, much l larger, and so I haven't found quite as many uh, used, and of course don't have as many new because of that additional expense. Which would be absolutely normal. When I get into the 3 8 I have an uh, unhealthy amount of 3 8 ratchets. But 3 8 is the most common size. Uh, quarter inch, second most common size. Half inch, third most common. So it is proportional. As you look in anybody's toolbox, they would normally have uh, less half inch than they do of other ratchets. Let's go and get right into it. What we have here is we'll just do some close up looks. This is a power bill. Um, and I have one of these in the quarter inch, and they are pretty nice. I've had this for a few years. This uses a design where the paw is directly connected to the lever. Uh, these type of ratchet designs have a machined out area. There's a real solid area, and then they have a block that's like this inside, um, and it's real solid. And the power belts have been pretty good. They're quick release, so you do have a hole in the middle. I'll say the one the power belt's actually pretty darn large, too. They really drilled a big hole in it, but it's held up well and been a nice kind of a beater ratchet. We have an old Proto here. This is a Challenger Proto, but uh, just to show people this distinctive switch design, that little sh kind of like a Chevrolet symbol, uh, always is a Proto or a Challenger. And these are pretty nice. When I do my Proto review, I'll show inside, these actually have a pretty nice twin pawl mechanism. I did just do a video of this. These are the indexable ratchets from Harbor Freight. These have a surprisingly high quality ratchet head. And in the, the previous video, I forgot to mention, they use kind of like a ratchet design for the articulation here. But since it's further out from the head, it doesn't take quite as much stress. And so it's held up just fine. And then these are great because of being able to articulate to the side rather than flex forward and back. And other options like being able to pump ratchet as well as spin them around and then of course locking it back into place we have long handle ratchets and these are uh, compared to standard length ratchets they are quite a bit longer for high torque and when you buy long handle ratchets generally you try to want to buy nicer ones because you end up using them for uh, uh, as breaker bars and actually that's why I bought this proto a uh, nice sealed head uh, with a solid anvil the quarter inch protos, I've had issues with the design. They have a real strong design, uh, floating paw to real wide paw. This is really greasy, why well, I'm not going to get inside that. And on the quarter inch, I've had issues where the reverse lever self reverses, where you ratchet and then you go to uh, wind it up again, and then the reverse lever will, the paw will kind of get caught and drag the reverse lever with it. But the, in the half inch, that design is very solid. I've always felt very confident in any amount of torque that I've ever put on uh, this ratchet and being long handle. Also want to mention I do appreciate the rounded end, which I wish more ratchets did because sometimes you're right like this and the sharp ends on many ratchet handles uh, end up pinching your hand. We have the Duralast long handle flex head half inch drive ratchet. This is a 72 tooth design. And as compared to the original, I'll call them the original coarse tooth Duralasts. We'll just do a quick side by side. You can see that these newer 72 tooths just aren't as nicely built. There's just no question. They look like totally different manufacturers. And they're, it's worked out just fine for me. It still has a pretty solid, solid cam mechanism like this inside. However, it's just been a little more disappointing because the anvil doesn't have the rubber seal like the old one does, and the reverse lever isn't quite as nice. But having a traditional long handle flex head uh, ratchet in half inch uh, has proven to be really handy, and I use this quite a bit. And I'm also really fond of just the standard all metal handle tools, even though I do have uh, soft grip tools. I did just review this. This would be that Tecton. Uh, 24 inch or 23 and a quarter inch super long handle half inch drive ratchet 
which has been really handy for uh, high reach. Really, I use this for when I'm reaching, when you may be reaching down an engine bay to get out a transmission bolt or an engine mount bolt. It's kind of nice to just have a ratchet that can get all the way down there. I also did just review these. These are known as Harbor Freight's ratcheting breaker bars. They're pretty cheap, and unfortunately for, and I read and reread through a bunch of reviews, quite a few people have had issues with them. Uh, at the same time, it seems uh, split. Uh, some people really had issues with these braking, and other people have had them work out great. I've only used them a few times, and, and they've been just fine for me. Um, they're pretty darn cheap, like 25 bucks or something uh, for the half-inch drive. And since Harbor Freights are pretty common, uh, if you do have issues, you know, always get it replaced. We have another Duralast. These are the compact head ratchets and this is a quick release and half inch drive these i would say the other really high quality ratchets the fit and finish of this even compared to the 72 tooth one is nicer let's just do that here and it has a traditional one of the things about these 72 tooths is you can see the logo is outline where it seems like on the more original or higher quality duralast it was single line not outline and this also goes along with this, the original coarse tooth ratchets. Um, these are really nice. We'll take a close look at it. What I like about it is it has a flush switch, so it's not so it's you don't accidentally hit the switch when you're working with it. And nice and recessed. I was going to mention that I like that about the Proto as well. Is the Proto it also has a recessed switch, and this has a nice strong ratchet mechanism and uses what is a floating pawl type as you can see that the little trigger handle is or the lever switch isn't moving when you ratchet but it sounds really nice and it is truly compact head if we measure it over the top of it you can see that it is quite a bit smaller and so this thing's actually come in handy quite often as we move down the line here we've got a Klein iron workers ratchet and I like this one because this is a good uh, you would call a beater ratchet it's nice and heavy duty very simple, just a block of metal with a press fit ring to hold it together. Come on, camera, focus. And the Paul is the reverse lever. Super simple, really coarse, but and yes, some debris can get in there. Um, but these are also really reliable. This particular one is a Klein, um, which are known as being basically the snap-on of lineman's tools. And of course, it has an alignment tool at the end. So this has been handy, obviously, in much more uh, situations than just iron working because you can use this to align suspension parts or when you're assembling any kind of equipment, uh, etc. Uh, gazebo in the backyard. It's really surprising where you just use this end to get the holes aligned and then you already have the socket ready to go so you can just flip it over and ratchet it in, ratchet the bolt in once you got it inserted without having to deal with pick up, picking up multiple different tools. And we can't go without mentioning the traditional SK roundhead ratchet. This is SK invented and patented, the first to patent roundhead ratchets. And they're really nice. Roundhead ratchets also were the first patent to expire. And uh, just all these companies were knocking them off. Some of the cheapest $5 socket sets all had roundhead ratchets. And so they had this terrible reputation uh, where everybody's like, a pair head ratchet's really nice. I really want a pair head ratchet. When in reality, if you actually get a nice professional grade round head ratchet, uh, they are easily as good as any pair head. Uh, I have no doubt about that, especially these SKs. They have a really solid um, reverse switch on them. And you can hear it. It has really nice solid paws in there. And then, of course, we have our Harbor Freights. So we have a variety of these professional ones. I won't pick each one up, but what we have is a standard fixed beam standard length fixed beam they have a st standard length flex head and the long handle flex head and as far as if you're needing a nice uh, half inch drive ratchet I would skip all the others and just start off with this one start off with the long handle flex head and the only time you think about other half inch drive ratchets is when this thing is just simply too long for some situation you're working in working with otherwise um, you're going to like the extra torque and leverage of the long handle, and you get the flex head at the same time. Uh, really, if you're going to have a one-off ratchet, I highly recommend uh, one of these Pittsburghs. 
Moving down the line, we'll go ahead and look at the original coarse tooth Duralast, which have a fixed paw. Now this paw, this is a paw out of a 3 8 Duralast. And so this is exactly what's inside here, only larger. The reason designs like this are better than designs like this, and I should talk about that for a second, is things like this Tecton here and the Harbor Freights, they use a uh, twin pole design, which is these two things. And they, and the little lever, what's happening is they're either pushing one off to the side so the, you know, this side activates, or when you reverse it, this gets pushed off to the side and this activates. And they have little right and left logos on there. The issues is obviously there isn't a lot of material there, even though the design means that they don't really want to slip that much. It's this small pivot point, and what can happen, I've read, is over lots of hard use over time, the little uh, sockets that these ride in get kind of rounded out, and then this paw sinks into it and then starts causing you issues. The other thing I want to point out why you want coarse ratchets is you can see here that on a, a fine-tooth ratchet, you get really fine teeth, and they're also really short because of that. Coarse tooth ratchets have really thick, much taller teeth. You have much more area of surface engagement, and they sink the two pieces of metal, i.e. the anvil and the ratchet paw, sink deeper into each other, uh, where it's much less likely for them to skip. You also have uh, excellent cross-sectional area on the roots of these teeth. The teeth are physically thicker than they are on, this, on the uh, fine tooth ratchets. That's why a lot of professional ratchets, such as this Proto here, use kind of a special design where the paw kind of looks like this, but all the teeth, or excuse me, like this, and all the teeth are on the top, around, shaped in a curve. So it has fine teeth, but there's, you know, 10 or 15 of them engaging at a particular time. And so back to this Duralast, these original ones with this articulated switch, I think, are some of the best auto shop ratchets. These actually have a rubber seal under the switch itself. The switch is screwed into the paw. And since this is from a Duralast, there's a little D ring to hold the switch. And then a screw goes through it, which is really nice. It's really well secured. There's also an O ring on the bottom of the anvil. So these are truly sealed ratchets. You can see that there isn't much oil on this ratchet compared to... If you look here, all the grease coming out of this Proto, even though I've re-greased this the same way. This is filled with grease, but it actually prevents it from all falling out, and it has a nice machine surface, which prevents it from seeping around the bottom plate. Also, and I believe it was Hot Rod Magazine, bought a bunch of old ratchets. There's this uh, article online, and if you search for the Duralast half-inch ratchet, you'll find that Hot Rod article, and they tested a bunch of ratchets to failure. And I that article said that this ratchet right here uh, failed at 834 foot-pounds of torque, uh, sim and that was no joke. Uh, even an article mentioned that they were really surprised uh, exactly how much force this Duralast ratchet took before failing, and yes, the square twisted off. The ratchet mechanism did not fail, and so that's why I recommend them so much. They're just a really nice, heavy-duty, coarse-tooth ratchet that's po properly designed, um, and are properly sealed, actual O-ring sealed under the switch and anvil. Um, definitely recommended. Finally, we have a couple more Harbor Freights here. We have one which people call the Roto Head Ratchets, and I like that. I think it's the best thing to call them. And these are these round flex heads, but instead of being a buckle that comes off, such as a traditional flex head, this design would also be used on round heads. It's the forks come up and drive it oh, gross, along the center line of the ratchet head itself, meaning that you can operate it at steeper angles and that the force is being applied right in the center of the ratchet head. So when you're trying to get sockets on in an awkward situation and you set this to a position, it doesn't want to force itself away. When you use regular flex heads, you're trying to get a socket on, You'll hit it, and then the flex, the head will flex out of the way like that, and it can make things challenging in certain situations. Roto heads are much better like that because you can get the socket on, and then you can actually hold it and then feed it onto the end of the fastener without having the roto head actually flip around on you so much. And it, it turns out to be quite convenient, even though the width of the head is pretty darn large compared to any other ratchets. 
And then finally, we have the Pittsburgh Professional. They call these the composite ratchets. They are a steel ratchet with a plastic layer over molded the steel body. It's steel all the way up through the handle. Uh, what's interesting is these have the same ratchet mechanism as all other Harbor Freight ratchets, uh, but they have a nicer switch, which I thought was interesting. I kind of like the hex design. These are not sold as being electrically insulating ratchets, although in reality they will help. And if you're working, say, on car batteries or something along those lines, you're much better off using one of these because if you do accidentally drop it or it, it, that you're working on the positive terminal and the head bumps against, say, a clamp on the battery, uh, you won't get a lot of sparks. Another nice thing about the all plastic rat or the plastic overmold is in the winter time it's not very cold. You don't get that freezing heat sink uh, of just the bare steel of a ratchet. And so that's another nice thing about these. Yet they're also strong. I think that just about finishes it up for this uh, Caddis Maximus video, doing this half inch drive ratchet review and comparison. I'll be doing a couple of more ratchet comparisons, but specifically Proto and Duralast ratchets, as I mentioned at the ending of the video. But this will kind of conclude my big dive into half inch drive, and we finally get to move into 3 8 um, and there's truly going to be a lot of videos dealing with the huge variety of 3.8 sockets and drive tools that are out there. So get ready for it. Anyway, thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe. Caddis Maximus out.